are going to be here today. This is something new for me to go live in the daytime. But I hope that it'll be something fun. If you're just finding me now on replay, I am going to go live on Thursday afternoons at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. And I hope that you will join me if you're on YouTube during the daytime. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'll talk to you a little bit about what we're going to be making. So, oh yeah, by the way, there's a designer series paper sale. If you missed that, don't forget. Um, there's information on my website, which is inkyhandswarmhearts.com. And um, that's always a good source to go there for pretty much all the information that you may need. And there's a join special this month through the end of June. You get $155 worth of products for $99, free shipping, a free paper pumpkin, um, a free pack of catalogs, and the $155 can be anything you want in the whole um, catalog. So it's quite a good deal. And if you pick paper, you will still get the sale price on the paper Um for your starter kit. So that's always a good way to check out. And then if you guys didn't see the newest um, kits collection kit, Boho Beach, it's eight cards. Hey John, thanks for joining. Um, it's eight cards for each of two designs. So don't miss out on that. Let me show you our stamp set. I think it's right here, I could be wrong. I'm going to have to look it up again because I think I forgot to tab it. It's called Here's to Love, and it's a wedding stamp set, but I have been using it for lots of other things besides wedding. I did do a wedding card on Tuesday because, after all, it's what it's intended for. Here's the stamp set. It's $24. It's on page 76 of the annual catalog, and it has two large images of a female and a male, and then... Um, flowers and then some ribbons to come from the flowers some fireworks and then a few sentiments so i am pairing this set with a stamp set called he's all that so let me show you that one he's all that is probably one of my most favorite masculine sets that we've ever had and it's on page 83 it's this one right here and it has matching dies and we're going to use those dies too. Hey, Clem, thanks for joining us. <laughs> thanks for hitting the thumbs up, John. So we're going to combine this um, He's All That set with the Here's to Love set. And this is the card that we're making. We're going to do a Boss's Day card. And I just thought that this was a fun way to use a wedding stamp set in a different way, right? All right, so let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how to make this cool card. Oh, by the way, the lettering is the Alphabet a la mode dies. So these are also in the annual catalog. Um, they're in the back where the dies are. They don't go with any particular stamp set. They're just standalone letter dies that we have. We're also gonna use the all that dies that match the he's all that stamp set. All right, let's move everything out of the way. We'll leave the card in the corner here so that you guys can see what we're doing. And we will go ahead and get started. If you are new to me and you've never watched my lives before, please let me know where you're here from. Okay, so we have an eight and a half by five and a half inch piece of um, basic gray is the color that I chose. And I'm gonna go ahead and score it at four and a quarter inches. And then we're gonna go ahead and burnish that. Thanks, John. All right. 
So this is going to be the base. I'm using the paper that I'm using is from our um, fishing suite. And it's called Let's Go Fishing. I'll show you the paper. I'm going to grab it here. Bring it up into the camera for you guys to check it out. And it is part of the designer series paper sale. So if you don't have the paper, it's a really fun paper pack. So you have this wood grained, blue wood grain, and then you have the fish. And then you have the netting and the fishing poles. And then you have this really cool like fishing flag, which we're gonna use that pattern for this card. And then the water. And then this really pretty um, brown plaid and then the fishing lures. And then you have this gray diagonal stripe and on the other side, it's um, a dark green. It's called uh, Mossy Meadow and it's fishing lures as well. Then you have this really cool brown and green plaid and some fish. So those are the papers in this cool um, collection and it's called um, Let's Go Fishing. So I'm going to show you, we're going to be stacking these two DSPs, one on top of the other. And so since we're going to be covering up most of this DSP, and I absolutely love this diagonal stripe, I wanted to save some of it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to come in here and we need about, I don't know, half an inch showing. So I'm going to put this on the half inch mark and then I'm going to... Um, come in at right here about 11 and a half inches and I'm just going to come down to about nine and a half. I'm kind of cutting the center out of this card and again I'm going to put it at the half inch mark and we're going to slide And you're basically cutting out the center. I'm trying to find my half inch. I'm losing my, um, my eyes are not grabbing very, very well. And then you'll just use your scissors to snip out again if you um, don't have it exactly proper. But we're just going to try and cut that little section out. I'm going to line that back up and see if I can meet that line. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and trim out the center and we're left with kind of a frame. So I don't, I didn't wanna to cut too far over. So we'll just use our scissor to finish trimming out our pieces. And that one's done, I guess. We have just two more to go here. So we have this one. Let's bring this one to meet it. I think the first one I didn't go far enough over. There we go. And then so now we have this little frame and then you can save this piece for, you know, a substantial mat or another piece. All right. So we are going to layer these two pieces. This one is going to be toggled in this direction. And this one is going to be toggled in this direction. Now, I haven't shown you. The reason that I chose this sketch for this card is I'm doing the Global Design Project Challenge today. So, let me find it for you. Um, the Global Design Project is a challenge group that you can... It's a blog. And you can go to their blog every Monday... And they post a challenge every week. And this week they posted a sketch. And this is the sketch. Right there. And so that is what I used... For my card so I'm gonna put them side by side here for you guys to see 
So I chose to use the sketch that they had, but they don't give you any rhyme or reason or theme for this particular one. It's just a sketch, so you follow this sketch. So that's how I came out with this sketch for the project that we're doing. So what we're gonna do is stagger these two pieces. So let me bring out my silicone mat and we're going to use our multi-purpose glue. And of course, you don't have to cut the frame if you don't want to. You can always leave the paper intact. Um, but I like to save my DSP because I love it and I hate using it up. <laughs> and so I like to have more pieces than, you know, I like to have a little extra. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to angle this piece in this direction, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and attach this one. Oh, I hate to cover this water. It's so pretty. This paper is really beautiful. Thanks, Clem. Thanks, John. <laughs> well, you know, I like my stuff. All right, so we're angling this one in the opposite direction. And I left a larger border on this side because that's how the sketch is set up, that there's a bigger section on that one side. So the, that's my base of my project. For the inside, I have chosen to put a piece of vanilla, um, very vanilla cardstock. And this is four by... Um, five and a quarter. Let me figure out what size these uh, little DSP pieces were. They are three and a half by four and three quarters. Both of them were the same size. Three and a half by four and three quarters. And then this is just a piece of vanilla that's going to go on the inside. That's four by five and a quarter. So let's go ahead and put it inside. We'll start eliminating some of these pieces I have sitting next to me. Actually, this is not four by five and a quarter. This is three and three quarters <laughs> by five. I can tell by the, the size when I went to put it inside. So it's three, it's pretty sure. Yeah, three and three quarter by five. Sorry about that. All right. So we have our basic outside pieces done. So let's go ahead and stamp our guy onto a piece of a scrap of basic white. And I'm gonna use Memento. When I have a larger stamp, I like to put the ink pad to the stamp instead of the, pad, the um, stamp to the ink pad. So I'm going to bring this guy over here and I'm just going to, you know, place him up here like so. All right, so there he is. It's a pretty cool image, I think. We'll clean it. There I go, moving my mat around for you. <laughs> All right, we're going to color him. I'm using the um, 600, which is part of the medium blend combo pack. These are from the Natural Tones blends. And so this one's medium. We're gonna color his ears and his neck and his hands. All right. And then we're using Pebbled Path Dark for his hair because it's like a gray with brown in it. And I just thought it would be cool to make him look like an older guy with some gray in his hair. All right, so there's that color. We're gonna leave his sleeves white and his pants, we're gonna use light basic black. There's no basic gray 
um, Stampin' Blends. So the light basic black is the closest I can get to that. So I'm gonna grab a scrap paper here. And we're gonna go ahead and do his pants. And as this color dries, it will fade. I'm making it a little longer, but we may trim it. I'm gonna come across and down. Richard Gear. <laughs> I think he's looking out of his big picture window into the scenery. You know how the bosses always have like these really cool offices and hopefully they have like, you know, a nice view, right? That's what he's doing, I think, Clem. I think he's looking outside at his cool view. I'm just gonna give it another coat here. All right. So there's his pants. All right. So now I wanted to give him a jacket and I wanted the jacket to be a little bit classier. So I decided that I would emboss in black the jacket on black so that there would be some detail, all the lines would be a little bit shinier. So we're going to take a piece, this is just a scrap of basic black, and I'm just gonna ink up the jacket. I wanna make sure I get the collar. I don't wanna miss that. All right. And so we're gonna position our guy onto our paper here so that his collar and his jacket fit onto the scrap piece of black. And I probably should have used some powder and all that good stuff, but I like to live on the edge. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try and show you guys. Hopefully you guys can see it. So it's a little iridescent-y, black on black there, and it's Versamark. So we're gonna use black powder, but first I'm gonna clean my stamp. And I'm gonna open this. Put it here. We're gonna pour black powder over it. And then, I'm gonna take my little brush. I like to have a brush to get rid of the parts that we don't want. But you can see that the powder took very well to the jacket, okay? And I'm gonna pour this back into my jar here. All right. Let's heat emboss our little boss's jacket here. Let me grab my heat gun. I'm gonna bring you guys down a little bit so that you can get a little closer to the action. So let's bring you down. All right. Got to grab something to hold on to my scissor. Be fine. see it turn even though it's black on black. Thanks, John. 
they used to do really nice stuff for you at your job for your birthday decorate your area and all that they were really good to you I want to make sure that this is all nice and heated before I pull away because I don't want my jacket to get ruined. So just give me a few minutes to get this nice and hot and make sure that all the powder has melted properly and that my boss's jacket is good to go. I'm going to pull him off camera real quick so that I can take a peek. Um the camera's too close for me to look hmm I might have to redo that I don't like the way that it took I'm gonna redo that jacket for whatever reason it didn't grab very well so I couldn't tell that well but I'm gonna redo it just hang in there with me guys we're gonna stamp on the other side I don't know if it didn't grab the ink or I just waited too long before I put the powder on. But we're not going to do that this time. We're definitely going to be quick. Okay. Whoops, I forgot my scrap. I still have powder in there from before. All right, I think this time for sure we're good. I might have too much in this one spot here. But I think the rest is good. I just wanna make sure that that one line of the jacket is covered. All right, let's get rid of this powder and put it away. When I have you close, it's good for you guys to see close stuff, but then when I have to do bigger things, <laughs> it's not the best place, right? Okay, let's try again. I don't know why it's giving me problems. Because I'm on camera, that's why. If I was here by myself, I wouldn't have any issues. Next time what I'll do is I'll have one ready in case I make a mistake. Because <laughs> if it's going to happen, it's going to happen on camera for sure. All right, I think this one is much better. Let me double check it. And make sure that it... Oh, I don't understand what's going on. Hmm... All right, guys, we're gonna try the third time's a charm. So hang in there with me. I'm gonna grab another piece of black cardstock. I don't know, I've never had a problem heat embossing before, so I don't know if my Versamark maybe needs to be re-inked or what could be the problem, but we're going to try again. Sorry. I probably should bring you guys back up. So that you can see what I'm doing because you can't see that good if I have you too close. Sorry about this. All right, I have it. It looks well inked, but going to trim this tab section off right here. I don't need that part. And we'll get rid of this portion so that I just have the boss here. And we'll try one more time. Sorry again for um, the problem. I don't know why I'm having such a problem. Of course, when I made the card the first time, no issues. 
First time, boom, perfect. All right, we're gonna roll with that. Let's put the powder back. All right. One more time, third time's a charm, right? <laughs> we'll see, I guess. Gotta grab my scissor so I can hold on. Thanks. I don't think I am. I just think that it's for whatever reason, it's not wanting to like grab. There we go. It's starting to grab there, starting to heat up. I don't know. I think I just didn't have enough Versamark maybe on there because this one's perfect. Yeah, I think maybe I didn't push down good enough on my Versamark pad. I'm not exactly sure what the problem was, but this one is good. You can see his shimmer of his black on black. So now we're gonna fussy cut my jacket. Re remind me of your name again, um, Honey Bee Hive. So I'm gonna trim this right along the line because I don't want any overlap. I normally, you know, fussy cut leaving a border, but this time we're gonna cut right along the jacket, the line of the jacket, right to the top. And we don't need his hand, so we're gonna come here, we're gonna cut the hand off and just leave the line of the jacket. And then we can come in from this side and go up this portion of his arm. That's good. And then finish this side. The nice thing about the stamp set is even though there's no dies for it, it's very easy to fussy cut. It's just very straight um, lines, not a lot of curves or intricate parts. So even though there's no dies for this particular stamp set. It's pretty fun. Tashana. I'm going to write that down because I keep forgetting and I am the worst with names like really bad. So I have to get better at it. All right. So there's his jacket. And he does have a tiny little piece in here and I am gonna go ahead and cut that out. I'm gonna use my X-Acto knife to get that piece. So let me grab my piece of glass. It's well-loved glass. And we're gonna cut just this little piece right here. It's a small, narrow piece but we want that other color showing through there. So I think we're good now. Yep, there, it's, a, it's narrow, but it works. All right, so we got that part done. Let's attach his jacket onto him. Sorry guys about all the, the trouble, but hey, make the card even more special. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna add a little bit of wet adhesive. We'll skip that. I have a new glue bottle, so it's very juicy. So juicy, in fact, that I'm not even keeping it upside down. All right, so we're gonna add his jacket right over the top. We want him to have that white sleeve showing. And we want to position him in place and I want to make sure that that opening I'm gonna grab my scissor here make sure that that opening shows there all right so there is the jacket in place his little sleeves are showing I want to make sure that we position it properly 
and there's that shimmer around the edges. Hey, Mima, thanks for joining. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up, guys, for me if you don't mind. I would appreciate that. Okay, so now we are going to cut around him, and this time we're going to leave that white space. So we're going to, we've paper pieced him. He's all good to go, and now we're going to leave that little white edge all the way around him. And we're going to cut the whole thing out as one unit. I think it's fun. I love paper piecing. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, I love the look of it, and it's always fun to do when you have a character, um, a little character in stamps that you can dress in different prints or different colors. All right, we're almost there. All right, for his legs, for right now, I'm not gonna leave so much. I'm gonna trim, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna round when I come around here. And we'll round here, and then we're gonna go around his jacket, and we'll leave that little white there. This time, I'm gonna go around his hand. And then we'll come from this direction. I'm going to cut this extra off. It's a little easier to go around when you have a little bit less paper to deal with. So we will leave that white there. And then, oops, sorry. I didn't mean to knock the camera. I have the camera pretty low for you guys to be this close. But I think it's good for detailed stuff for you guys to see a little closer. All right, so here we go. And I'm just gonna trim just a little bit more off that side. And then we're gonna come in here in between. And we'll also leave a little edge. All right, so there's our little guy cut out. Let's get rid of all of these pieces. All right, so let's start positioning our card how we want it to look. So he's gonna be about there. We have our, to the man who does everything, that's gonna go on the inside. I've already stamped and cut, love this guy, but I'm gonna show you guys where these are coming from. So these are from He's All That, so there's that one. We're also going to use these little corners and we're going to use the number one. And then in the die set, we are going to use these argyles. And then this is the die that cut this out. So you can see that not only does it cut it out, but it leaves an inner rim, which is really classy. I really love that look. So I think that's pretty awesome. And that's what we used for that. And so I have um, a couple of these cut out, but a couple of them are not. And then I did use adhesive sheets today. So yay for me using adhesive sheets because I always tell you guys to use them and then I, I never end up using them for the projects. So we have the word boss. I'm going to bring you guys up a little bit, not too much, but just enough so that you can see a little bit more of the area. All right, how about that? I think that's good. We'll move up here. All right, so I have stamped these two corners and I'm gonna show you how I cut them, but first we're gonna punch this, and I'm using a three quarter inch circle punch. Stampin' Up used to have a three quarter inch circle punch, and it's been retired, but um, you can get that. I will link it in the description below after the video is over for you guys if you want to find um, another brand because Stampin' Up no longer carries that. So I'm coming down this side here and then here I'm gonna give it a little snip. And then I'm gonna come straight down this direction. And that squares that end right there. 
And then I'm going to square this end by coming straight up like that. And then I'm going to come this way. And I don't want this to be too pointy, so I'm going to go ahead and square that end as well. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is just come in here with the little tips. This is why I love these paper snips so much. You can cut all the way to the tip and cut away that tiny little piece in there. So let's do the other one real quick now that you guys know what I'm doing. So I'm going to do the two sides first, those two straight edges. And then I'm going to come across the bottom. And then I'm going to do each corner. And then I'm going to snip that top so it's square like the rest of the pieces. And then I'm going to come in here and do this little point. Thanks, Meme. All right. So there are those. So I have four of those. I have the circle. I have the word boss. And I'll show you the argyles. I have three argyles. And those are out of basic black. I just use scraps. Okay, so we're going to pull those apart first and get everything ready to go. You got to have all your parts and pieces. And then you can get to work, right? All right, so we're going to pull apart the argyles first. And so... You, when you have the adhesive sheets on there, it literally is a sticker. And so this has some in, intricate parts that sometimes want to stay in there. So we'll pull those out as we go. You kind of take your time peeling so that you get those stuck there. And then there are the... Pieces there. And I'm going to have to try and get those little edges peeling slowly a little at a time. I need that last bottom one. It's stuck. Oh, and I have one of the triangles from there. All right. I think I got them all. Let's see. One is stuck to the back. This is a sticker, sticker issues. All right, so let's go ahead and throw those away. I have some stuck to my fingers, but they're like stickers, so they're easily peeled off. All right, so let's start with our first argyle. I want it positioned to the right, I mean, to the left of my guy here. Move that out of the way for right now. So I want it positioned about right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick that corner down and I'm gonna move him out of the way and we'll just make sure, it, oops, one stuck back there. I have to move that. It's hard to see until you go to put it against your surface because it's black on black. There we go. All right, so we're gonna attach our argyle down. There's the first one. Then he is going to be right here, like so, okay? And then we're gonna put two more. So let's go ahead and peel them off of the backing. Little by little, we'll get all the parts and pieces off. So what I try and do first is see what comes off when I peel. Okay, so the four diamonds came out, but the other sides still have. So if you stick your fingers behind there, they like to stick to our fingers. So that's a good way to remove them, the parts that you don't want stuck in there. You just kind of stick your finger and see how it sticks to your fingers. So little by little, you'll get all your pieces off. All right, so now I just need to throw all of these pieces away. They're not, it's not so sticky that you cannot um, handle it on your fingers. And it's actually a great way to get it to um, come off is to use your fingers as your tool to remove those little um, 
they're like small little, I don't know, accent marks or something. But they're really cool. They just don't need to be in there. They're supposed to be out, right? They're supposed to have, those are supposed to be gaps. They're not supposed to have pieces in there. So we'll have one more. I'm going to stick this just temporarily to that top of the card and we'll get the other one out. So let's peel our argyle. There's one, two, three. We just have the bottom one stuck on that side. Let's see if I can get it to stay. All right, so there's that one. Let's see if the little diamonds, they t the, the little diamonds tend to stay down better than those little skinny strips. There's one. This one is two. Three. Okay, we got we did pretty good this time. We just have that one and then this piece right here. There we go. I think we got them all now. I'm just going to go ahead and take these and put them into the trash can and then we'll be good to go on to our final piece. All right, so let's go ahead and attach our two other argyle pieces on. So I wanted one of them. I wanted my guy to be down here and I wanted one kind of tucked under his arm, but I wanted them even. So what I did was I took my ruler and I kind of placed it where it's going to be. And then I brought the ruler and I brought it straight across my card so that I could find the bottom of that last argyle so that it would be straight like that. And then this one is going to join with it right here. Whoops. That one still has a piece stuck to the back. Good night. All right. There we go. So there's that last one. Just like that. So there's our three argyle pieces. And you want to go ahead and press them into place give them a nice press so that that adhesive backing stays. Now our guy is gonna go right there. And now we have to do our word boss. This is also on adhesive backing, but it's a little easier um, for this one. So we're gonna just peel, it's gonna be the complete letter, so it's not as bad, it doesn't have all these intricate spots. So I wanted to make sure that this stayed up onto this paper. So I'm gonna, I'm not pushing them down into place until I have all my letters down. I like these alphabet a la mode dies. Do you have these, Clem? Now, the, you have to be careful because your paper is going um, upward, so you don't want your words to be going upwards, you know, on an angle. So again, I use my ruler as my guide and I'm going to just drop it slightly and that should be where I want my O to go, the bottom of my O and the bottom of my S. So I'm just gonna raise it slightly and then we'll put our last S on there. Using a ruler is a really great way to make things even. So there's that one. So we have the word boss down now. We're gonna press that one into place. 
All right, so we're gonna pop him up with dimensionals. So let's go ahead and grab some. And for his arm, I have lots of these um, finished pieces of dimensional, so I'm just gonna grab a little strip of them and kind of lay that there up that arm. All right, so let's go ahead and pull the backs off. I want to make sure I'm still in the camera since I have you guys so close. So we're going to put our boss down like this. We want him right about there. Okay, so now we're going to put love this guy here. And we want to raise up everything from this and love across. So again, I'm going to use these little guys. I'm just going to do three of them or two and a half. And I'm going to attach it to this end. And then this other side, I'm just going to put wet adhesive. So let me grab my silicone mat. And then that will stick to the boss. Make sure that this is not sticking out. I think it is slightly. Let's move it over. All right. All right, so here we go. We're gonna add, love this guy. It's gonna go right over that argyle. And remember, in the sketch, it had a little strip. I'm gonna make sure it's straight here. On this side. I'll show you the sketch again for Global Design Challenge. So this is the sketch. So that's the little, whoops, that's that little strip right there that I'm attaching on my card. It's this love, the, this guy strip. And then we're going to put number one for number one boss. So let me grab one of my dimensionals. So we're going to grab that and pull that off. We'll put that right here in between these two argyles. And then for these little corners, I'm gonna use a mini dimensional. I just have to grab those. And I'm just gonna put it in the corner. It should be enough to hold those. All right, so let's pull the backs off of those. And then we're almost done with the front of our card. So I'm gonna place this one on the corner of this piece. And then this one on the corner of this piece right here. I'm gonna back it up a little. So those are the two corner pieces. And now for the inside of the card, we're going to attach to the man who does everything. We're gonna put that flat on the inside, so let's get our silicone mat out. This gets centered right in the middle of our car. Whoops, I just moved it, that's not good. Let's lift it up. I do love the wiggle room, but sometimes I don't give it enough time to set and then it wiggles on me. Okay, so we're gonna do our last two pieces. We're gonna put one up here and one here, and we're gonna flat glue those. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add the wet adhesive to the back, and then we'll pull them one at a time with my tweezers to attach those onto the inside of the card. All right. So let's put this one in this corner. And I like them to kind of stick out past that vanilla 
cardstock because that's how these little, um, like they fit into that corner. So you want it to look like it's actually like fitting into that corner of the, the cardstock is fitting into that little corner. So that way it has to stick out beyond that end. So there's our inside. And here is our outside. And there is our sketch right next to our card. What do you guys think of this project? I hope you liked it. I had so much fun designing this card. Um, this to me was one of the funnest um, projects that I've worked on in a really long time. It helped me think outside the box. And I have really enjoyed using the stamp set this week and doing a variety of projects with it. It's really been a lot of fun for me. So on Sunday, this was our card that I introduced. Let me bring you guys back up so that you can see everything. All right, let's see, I think we're good there. All right, so on Sunday, I made a You're Invited Save the Date card and I used the Pretty Peacock and Lost Lagoon papers to make this card. And then we did a bridesmaid card on Monday and it was to ask your girlfriend to be the bridesmaid. And then Tuesday, we did our wedding card on the live and it's a congratulations wedding card. And then on Wednesday, we did a Father's Day card. So I used the guy to do this shimmery. Um, see how he his jacket is shimmery? It's that luster in color paper. And this is in boho blue. So it's a specialty paper in the catalog that is um, shimmery. And I just thought it was really cool for this Father's Day card. And again, I used the He's All That stamp set for that one. So those were the cards this week. And then this is today's card. So I hope you guys enjoyed this week's projects. If you don't mind, um, checking out my other videos and leaving me comments. I would greatly appreciate that. <laughs> Clem, I know you don't have a boss anymore. Thanks, John. I appreciate you guys being here. Thanks for hanging out with me on Thursday at 1. I will be here every week Thursday at 1. So check it out and see me in the daytime if you have time. Thanks so much to Shauna for popping in. See you later. All right, guys, this is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Don't forget about this great set, Here's to Love. And I will talk with you later. This is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Happy stamping.